attending. So before we jump into the agenda, I just want to introduce first um, our team. So myself, it goes out with myself. So my name is Leslie. I'm the Communications and Community Engagement Lead in Generation Singapore. And this evening with me is Hadija. So if most of you already know her, always replying to her emails, their calls. She's a recruitment and marketing associate manager. Say hello, Hadija. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Good evening. All right, and we also have Wishan, our operations lead. Hi, everyone. And this also very special info session. We have uh, Miss Nariana Sarah <laughs> cringing us from from Microsoft. She's a program manager of Get Ready SG. Hi. Hi, Nariana. everyone. Thanks for um, joining. So maybe before we jump in, maybe. Anna, maybe do you have any words of encouragement to our potential applicants to our program? Um, so thanks everyone for joining us tonight. Um, Generation has prepared a really lovely presentation to give you a really good overview about what Get Ready SG is, what you can expect. And we also have um, learners and mentors who have been through the program um, and who will share their experience. And hopefully that gives you a sense of what this program is about, whether it's right for you and whether it will help you reach your career goals. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anna. Okay, next slide. All right, so as Anna mentioned, so we'll share about the program and we're very privileged to have um, two of our alumni and a mentor who will do a sharing later and we will have a Q&A after the session sharing. So there's a Q, um, question and answer button in your uh, Zoom webinar. So use that button to type in your questions. Again, so just to make it more streamlined, so use that button for your questions instead of, of the chat. And yeah, so feel free to ask any questions and we'll address that later. The slides will be sent out to you and the recording as well. All right. Okay, next slide. So just a quick introduction of um, who we are. So we are a global independent uh, nonprofit that we're working across 16 countries and we train and place disconnected um, job seekers um, all over the world across different um, professions such as tech, healthcare, customer service, and skill trade. So for um, as of today, we have already supported over 50,000 graduates at an 83% job placement rate globally and more than 70% are continued to be employed six months later after they graduate the bootcamp and generation. We are now in 16 countries and it's now our seventh year. And in Singapore, we um, collaborated with Skills Future and public and private institutions since 2018, when we first started here in Singapore to support job seekers in different professions like digital marketing, patient service associate, engineering, customer service associate and software development. All right, so just, just a bit of um, overview about us. Next slide, please. Okay, so maybe you're thinking like, what is so unique about Generation? I'm sure most of you have been checking other courses in my Skills Future website and, you know, like there are different courses out there. So just to um, share about the methodology of Generation. So this is a tried and tested methodology that we apply to all our programs um, globally. So here in Generation, before we even start a program, we identify an in-demand entry-level role. And then we design the curriculum based on the employer needs. So again, first is job first before we train job seekers. And then we recruit people from different channels who are facing um, bar barriers to employment, employment. And then we evaluate your applications based on what? So maybe asking how, how am I being evaluated? So you're based on aptitude and motivation to launch a career. And you will see that in details later when Hadija will share that process. And then we deliver the practice-based curriculum, which trains not just technical skills, but also behavior and mindsets for the role. And then upon completing the bootcamp of the program, um, our employer partners will be able to interview and hire graduates and dr th that drives value of the employer and delivering a transformative impact on our learners. And we are very grateful with this collaboration with Microsoft that majority of our employer partners are within Microsoft ecosystem. 
And we also offer social support and mentorship to ensure that our graduates to continue to perform at their best during and after the program. And of course, the last two steps here, the return on investment data. So these two steps go hand in hand as we gather data and feedback from our learners and instructors, even employers, because we want to continuously improve the curriculum and make sure that there's return on investment. All right, next slide. So that's just an overview. Let's just have a quick poll. Okay, let's make it interactive. So which sentence do you identify the most? So some of you here, you are really interested in reskilling and upskilling or in your B2, you're considering all your other options. Or number three, or the most on group, I'm ready to get a full-time job in tech. Okay, some of you putting in the chat. Let's see, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten seconds. Okay, type in your just yes, temperature check. So just so you know where you are. Cool. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. It's over. So let's see the majority. Oh, wow. A majority 38%, so the highest 38%. You're ready to get a full time job in tech. Wow, that, that's great to know. And 20, 34%, you're considering all your other options. And 28%, you're interested in reskilling and upskilling. That's great to know. I really hope that you will be successful um, becoming a generation learner. And just again, a reminder of Hadija will also remind us later that this is our last batch for SGUP, a full stack in cloud, and we'll be closing the applications. And so I'm glad to see um, a big group also is ready to get full-time job in tech. Great, thank you for that. Next slide. Okay, so now we'll move on to an overview of Get Ready SG programs and I'll pass the time to Hadija. Hadija, over to you. Thank you, Leslie. Thanks for the introduction. Hi, everyone. I'll take you through the first section of today's information session, um, which means which basically means I'll just take you through the programs, the roles that we have that'll help you launch a career in tech. So what is the Get Ready SG program, you might be wondering. So Get Ready SG is a national skills initiative that's co-created by Microsoft and Generation Singapore in partnership with IMDA, Skills Future Singapore, and Tomase Polytechnic. The initiative hopes to upskill a thousand job seekers over a two-year period and match them with meaningful employment opportunities in technology. So here's a video of our Generation Singapore CEO, Pratik, um, introducing this Get Ready SG initiative. Get Ready SG is actually an initiative that Microsoft and Generation came together with the government of Singapore uh, to help Singaporeans with no or minimal tech background to get into tech careers. Extensive involvement of employers. Number two, the learning design and experience. And number three, the wraparound support and mentorship that is provided throughout. 70% of the learning that happens in Get Ready SG is practical. Uh, you're not really listening to just lectures that, that's coming in through your instructor, but actually practicing in small groups in real life situations that we will try and simulate. Uh, and these are inspired by actual observations and inputs that we have gotten from companies. All this ensures that you will learn to learn. We have learners from really diverse backgrounds. Um, most of them don't have a technology background. Um, either they are university graduates in non-technology disciplines, have been working in different sectors, and now because of COVID, they've either lost their job or they've voluntarily decided to make a transition into technology because they see an opportunity. The big thing that we're looking for when we select someone to become a Get Ready SG learner is are you really motivated to make the career transition? The journey is not going to be easy, but you have help along the way. Our aim is to help you get into a good tech jobs. It's not just upskilling, not just reskilling, to make sure that you are successful in the job that you're going to get into. All right, so 
ESG BCT programs that we're highlighting today are part of the Get Ready SG initiative. So SGPCT stands for SG United Mid-Career Pathways Program Company Training. And these are skills future programs that are designed for job seekers and mid-career professionals who are looking to gain in-demand digital skills um, and enter a career in the fast-growing technology sector. So we usually run programs for three uh, we usually run three programs, excuse me, um, and they are junior full stack developer, cloud support and DevOps and business intelligence and data analyst. However, like uh, Leslie has mentioned earlier, we are no longer accepting applications for the business intelligence and data analyst program. So what kind of job roles are available to you after you complete these programs? So other than the junior junior data engineer role that we're not accepting applications for anymore, uh, we also have roles for a junior full stack developer and a cloud support and DevOps practitioner. So each program will train you for an entry level position in any of these roles. So let's take a closer look at these two roles for the programs that we're focusing on today, the junior full stack developer role and the cloud support and DevOps role. Okay, so what is a junior full stack developer? Essentially, the responsibility of any full stack developer is to write code to design and implement software. So whether that's web-based or for a mobile application. As a full stack developer, you'll work both on the front end, which is the client facing side of the software, and on the back end, which is the side of the software that customers never see, but other developers will. A junior full stack developer will also work on documenting code, discussing product requirements with clients and product teams, as well as spending time daily fixing bugs and errors or adding features to the company's software. Now, what is a cloud support and DevOps practitioner? As a DevOps engineer, you'll take the code that's written by full stack developers and do something in software development that's called deployment. Now, it's your job to make sure that everything goes off without a hitch and that customers are always able to see and interact with the software. You'll do a lot of managing and maintenance of tools used by other developers, and you'll mostly be working on product teams and with other internal stakeholders. Now, you can see that the expected starting salary range for each of these entry-level roles is about uh, is between three thousand dollars to four thousand dollars five hundred per month. So now that you have heard more about the roles, uh, you may be wondering what role might suit you best. So if you visit the link that's shown on the screen, or you can do this once you've received uh, the slides after today's session, you'll be directed to a brief self-evaluation quiz on our website. So the quiz asks you some questions about yourself and you'll be able to figure out what roles might be suitable for you. So in some instances, people who take the quiz get a clear cut answer of which role they might be best suited for. But like most people, you might find yourself between roles. So this is where we'd recommend that you try a programming language to see how you'd enjoy it. We all We've recommended some free uh, self-based courses with re relevant coding courses on the web page. And we've also put together some video playlists, and this might help you understand the day-to-day -day work of any of these roles and the differences between them. So ultimately deciding on which program suits you best requires a lot of reflection of your own uh, personal and professional experiences, and also determining which area of tech you're most interested in. Um, and we always encourage our applicants to do as much research as possible before applying because we want to make sure that they'll be in the right program for them. So I'm sure you're wondering a little bit about who our learners are, what they look like, what kind of backgrounds they come from. So let me share a few learner profiles to give you an idea of the people who are enrolled in our programs. Um, so these are kind of an amalgamation of different learners. Uh, you can see that we have learners who are in their late 20s to learners who are in their early 50s. Um, some learners have a degree, some learners have a diploma. Um, most of them have non-tech work experience, so they don't have a tech background or a formal tech background. Um, some may have been unemployed or retrenched before they joined the program, or they might have like uh, voluntarily left their job in search, in search of opportunities. But I think one thing that our diverse group of learners have in common is that they have the motivation not only to upskill, but also to search, search for better employment opportunities for themselves. All right, now, after you've decided uh, what program you want to apply to, and if you've been accepted, this is what your journey as a learner will look like. 
you'll start off with an orientation where you meet your classmates. You'll also meet your program manager and your learner success associate. They're key people from the Generation Singapore team who will be there with you to support you throughout your nine month journey. After the orientation, you'll start the three month training bootcamp, which is where you'll pick up the core technical skills uh, you'll need for the role. So the training bootcamp is delivered by Tomasi Polytechnic and it will be from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. five days a week. Um, at the moment, all classes are online because of COVID restrictions, but should we be able to return the, to the classroom, classes will be a blend of in-person and online learning. So after the three-month boot camp, you'll embark on your apprenticeship at a partner company for up to six months. And throughout the program, you'll also have support from a mentor who is an industry practitioner. And later this evening, we'll hear from a mentor in our program. So for learners who haven't found a full-time job by the end of the apprenticeship, the generation team will provide job placement assistance. So ideally, we want to make sure that at the end of the nine month program, you'll graduate and be in full time employment. So since the program is full time and can be intensive, here are some of our expectations of your commitment as a learner. So things like attend you know, all the classes, um, except for if you really can't. Um, and so you should also note that for graduation purposes, you will need to attend uh, fulfill a minimum attendance. Of course, be present and participate in all the activities. Be active in your own self-learning outside of the classrooms. Uh, we have a lot of learners who spend their time on their weekends, not only to revise what they've learned during the boot camp, but also add to their knowledge. And also own your job search process. So our shared end goal is to have you in full-time employment. And while our team will help you, we also want our learners to be proactive in their search for employment. Okay, so because this is a Skills Future program, there's some eligibility criteria that you have to meet. So you must be a Singaporean citizen or permanent resident above the age of 21. Um, you should have graduated from school, so whether that's ITE, Polytechnic, or university before 2019, so in 2018 or before that. Um, if you had to complete national service, that should have also been completed before 2019. And you must not have attended um, an SG United, uh, SGUS or SGP program before. So when we evaluate applicants, we do look for those without work or education experience in tech, those who are motivated to start a full-time job after completing training, anyone whose job has been affected by the pandemic, or uh, people like PMETs, gig economy workers, and also mothers who are returning to the workforce. So for this program, the fee is $750. All of it is skills future claim of credit claimable if you are a Singaporean citizen. And you can also receive an allowance of up to $1,500 per month while you study uh, if you meet the minimum attendance requirement per class. Okay, so here is what you will be learning in the programs. This is the bootcamp portion. Um, and like we mentioned earlier, you will get this slides so you can take your time to look through the two slides there about junior full stack developer program and the cloud support program so one thing you may notice is that we have behavioral skills and mindsets um, and those are the same across the programs and that's because like leslie mentioned earlier our generation methodology focuses not only on equipping learners with technical skills but also the soft skills that will ensure that you're able to perform the best of your to the best of your abilities on the first day of your new job Okay, so here are a few key components of generation programs that give an edge to um, our SGU PCT programs. Let's just go back one. Okay, so the first is apprenticeship. So this is the on-the-job training component that provides you the opportunity to apply the skills that you've learned in the training bootcamp under the supervision and guidance of experts in the domain while you continue to earn uh, the training grant of up to $1,500 a month. And the next is mentorship. So trainees will receive mentorship support from Generations Network of Tech Coaches. With the coaches experience, they'll be able to guide you outside of the learning environment to cope with any professional challenges that you face during the training period. And the third is support. So as a generation learner, you'll have access to well-being support, employment support, and placement assistance. Our team of uh, program managers and learner success associates will check in with you regularly to ensure that you're coping and you're doing well in your career change. Oh. OK, 
case, here are some of our employer partners who are part of our um, employer network. So we have over 50 employer par partners um, in our network. These are just some examples. Earlier, I mentioned that mentorship is one of the pillars of our program. Um, and the objective of mentorship is to build a supportive and trusting environment for the learner during and after the bootcamp. And here are some examples of employment support that we have for learners. So we hold workshops with industry experts, and we also conduct employment related workshops like LinkedIn workshops to help you put your best foot forward in your job search. Okay, so let's get to an important part. So if you wanna be part of the program, you need to submit an application. This is an overview of our application process. Now the length of the process uh, de depends, or the length or how long it takes for you to complete the process depends on the program that you're applying for. So for the Junior Full Stack Developer Program and the Cloud Support Program, it can take you between four hours to five hours to complete. Um, now, I know that sounds like a lot, but you don't have to complete the entire process in one sitting. We actually do recommend that you complete each stage at a time and then move through the process. So I'll cover some details of the application. So you'll start by registering for an account. Um, you'll answer some questions about yourself um, and also ensure that you are eligible for the program based on the criteria I shared earlier. So this is um, important. So if you're not sure if you're eligible for the program, you can reach out to us by email and I'll share our email address with you later before you start your application. So you'll be asked then to review key program information and acknowledge your understanding of our expectations and uh, of learners. For the junior full stack developer program, you'll be given an hour to take a cognitive skills uh, test. Then you'll do a technical task. So for this particular program, you'll complete the first module of the Introduction to HTML course on Codecademy, um, and you'll create a simple web page in the sandbox environment. Uh, you upload your screenshot, which will contain uh, your learnings and your reflection of the task. For the Cloud Support Program, you'll also be given an hour to take a cognitive skills test, and then you'll complete the first three lessons of the, oh, sorry, two lessons of the Introduction to Python Programming course on Udacity. Um, and then you'll take a Python quiz. So something to note is that in between the logic test and the technical assessments, you can always take a break. But if you're doing the test or the assessment, you will not be able to pause. So you'd need to complete that stage before you move forward in the application. Okay, um, and the last stage is to complete a recorded interview using the HireVue platform. There will be four questions for you to answer at random. Um, there's no time limit on how long you take to prepare your answer before you record your response. So we recommend taking your time to think through your responses and provide as much relevant information as you can. Now, we understand that it can be nerve wracking to do an interview, and that's why we allow you to take all the time you want to prepare before you record your answers. And that should take you about 20 to 30 minutes to complete, depending on how long you take uh, to prepare. Uh, you might also be invited for a live interview with our team um, and usually that session is just for us to get to know you better and understand how our programs can help you in your journey. So some general things I can share about the interview. We're looking to hear a lot about your motivation to make a career or change in the tech, why you chose that specific role, and the research you've done to make sure that it's the right role for you. Now after you've submitted the application, you should hear from us within eight to 10 working days after you've completed the interview. If you're shortlisted, you'll receive an email with instructions on how to register with Tomasic Polytechnic and make payment to secure your spot in the cohort. Now, something important to note is that we evaluate and select candidates on uh, a rolling basis. This means that it is possible that we stop accepting applications earlier than the application deadline if we have already reached capacity for our class size. Okay, here are the start dates for the upcoming course. So both will start on the 31st of March and we're currently accepting applications until the 23rd of February. So if you're interested to join any of those programs, I encourage you to apply soon because these, like Leslie mentioned earlier, these are our final SGP cohorts. So now I'll pass the time back to Leslie who will take us through the next section of the webinar. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Hadija. So I hope that 
you had some bit of clarity and enlightenment about um, details of the program. These are just a few of our learner stories and testimonials on how they have been impacted by the program. I won't go through this, this quite a lot, but as I mentioned, you will receive, <coughs> excuse me, the slides after the session, you can be in your own time. Okay, so now we move on to our sharing portion. So we just kind of call it like a reality talk. You know, now you've heard um, the program process and all that. So it's best that we hear it from the experience of our alumni and also our mentor of the program. Okay, so um, next slide, let me just introduce them to you. So we're very grateful we have um, Jeremy Hunt, he's a co-founder and CTO of Staff Any. Yeah, Jeremy, want to say hi? Okay, that's Jeremy. So one of our great, amazing mentors who have always been doing this sharing in the info session many times. Thank you, Jeremy, for being here again. We also have Kenneth from our Junior Full Stack Developer Program. Kenneth, hello. Okay, and we have Timothy from Cloud Support and DevOps Program. So Kenneth and Timothy, they will share their experiences in the bootcamp. They'll also share some words of encouragement for you. And we um, um, want you to really ask questions about their experience so that later on after they're sharing, type in the Q&A button of your questions, ask as many questions as you can and take this opportunity to get um, information and inspiration from them. Okay, so maybe we'll start off first. Um, let me call on uh, Timothy to start his sharing. Over to you, Timothy. Hi, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And um, I'm excited to be to be here to to share my experience with with you guys. And um, to begin off, um, I'm just like you. Um, probably last year, about the same time, puzzled. Whether should I take the, take up this um, this um, book camp, and um, if I do so, will I be able to 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 make it through? Because I have no um, what do you call the um, IT background, and um, and I'm um, do I want to give up my my present career and um and change and change um my career path and um one year after and i'm still around and i've got a job and i i successfully changed my career path um to um, um to 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 a new name card which is called um, cloud engineer so, but um, all this, um, all thanks to to generation for the for the opportunity. Um, I did I did consider a few other options, but um, the 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 one thing that generation attracted me was um, the six months apprenticeship, which is uh, a great help for for us um, with our experience to actually go in hands-on and um, to try things and to break things and to learn things. And um, it prepares us for the, for the, for the perm role that, um, that, that you want. So, um, so that's why I, I actually uh, chose to, 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 to join Generation for the, for the bootcamp. And uh, for those who are worried that well, uh, what's Python? Will it bite? Um, well, um, it might bite um, initially, but as you as you get to tame it um, with the help of um, the the superb um, lecturers and um, and the the, the 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 staff from Generation looking after your 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 your, your mental well being your. Uh, all well beings from head to toes, and make sure you, you, you are, you are happy learners. And um, I guarantee you that uh, Python is, uh, it's just, it's just another tool that you can, that can help you, that can help you in your in your work, and to make you into a, um, a professional DevOps and even a, a cloud engineer. So um, 
that's um some journey that I want to have you guys and I hope that if you have any questions um please um I'll try my best to, 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 to answer if I can. And um if um you're wondering yes I I I I I did get my uh, my 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 perm role a full time job during my apprenticeship and um um, the sharing from Hatija is uh, being proactive is one of the, the things that I think um, all of us should, should have in us. And uh, it, it really sets you apart from other people. And it gives you the, 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 determination, uh, the determination that you have to, to change, um, that you wanted to, 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 to move from your previous role into the new high-tech, fast moving um, IT role and um, the, the desire is um, is what um, these um, employers out there are, are looking for as well and and not to forget that uh, all your experiences be, be, uh, before uh, these are these are, are, um, are valuables very valuables. Um, I can share uh, something that um, that happens to me um, when I get my first when I get my my, my full time job. Um, after a month, my my boss he actually asked me, Timothy, um, what do you see yourself after after five years? I say, oh, okay, uh, probably I'll become a, a a senior cloud engineer or or, or a cloud architect. So he said, okay, great. So um, um, why not now you, I will craft out the, the career path for you as, um, as a career, uh, as a cloud architect. He said, wow, that's fast. He said, well, your, your past experience um, in, in meeting people actually helps being um, a cloud consultant. And um, you, your your age actually helps. I mean, by the way, I'm I'm more above forty, and I thought, wow, uh, of age does does help in in being a consultant because he said that you 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 look more convincing, and um, you portray yourself more maturely. So oh, okay, thanks. So, well, I'm enjoying my 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 new career and uh, my full time job. So. Thank you very much, everyone. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much, Timothy. Every time I hear your story, I always get encouraged and really proud of your achievement and your passion and dedication. And just like what you shared, you know that age is not really a barrier. So if some of you here in, the, in this info session are above 40 or above 50, you know, you might think that, oh, will I be able to keep up with tech? But like what Timothy shared is a lot, a lot of your transferable skills that you have learned in your other industries. So they won't go to waste. Amazing, Timothy. And I hope you didn't get bitten by Python. <laughs> we will take care of you from head to toe, your well-being. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you, Timothy. Okay, and let me also call on Kenneth to share. Over to you, Kenneth. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay, uh, so very well said, Tim. Yeah, I totally resonate with that as well. So a little about me, I'm an architecture graduate. Uh, then I moved to uh, managing uh, a restaurant chain and then the pandemic struck. So I had to rethink my career path, which is how I landed on this uh, food stack developer program. A um, little bit about my bootcamp. Uh, it's quite intense, but I enjoy it because uh, our instructor, Miss Jean and Brian are really attentive and really kind uh, in explaining stuff to us. So um, I'm actually uh, working with Standard Chartered as part of the data analytics team now. So um, during the apprenticeship, they they told us that they won't go to, they won't use the normal approach to teach us. Instead, uh, we are given 
two different kinds of projects. So the first one is uh, creating a website from scratch. And the other one is uh, maintaining their uh, chatbot. Yeah. So uh, it's quite intimidating actually uh, starting because uh, you, you are, you only learn like most of the basic stuff during the bootcamp. And then uh, in the bank, uh, the, the level of uh, co coding that they use is actually quite, uh, I would say more towards intermediate to advanced. So at first it would be very stressful and also frustrating because uh, when you code, it doesn't mean that you will get it correct. There will be a lot of errors and bugs. And then you have to sift through a huge amount of code. Like in the bootcamp, you probably uh, code things from scratch, which is like about a few hundred lines. But in the bank, the, the code that they, uh, they've done up is about a few thousand signs per page. So yeah, so you have to be uh, quite motivated to, to be able to sift through all the codes during the working time. And then at night, you have to complement it with learning. And what I really like about uh, this ap apprenticeship is uh, they, they give us uh, access to Udemy. So during our self-learning, we can simply choose uh, the, the courses that we think would help us. So usually it would be uh, courses that starts with like uh, from beginner to expert. And, and then uh, most of the time you have to go through all the courses maybe a few times. So uh, it's quite uh, demanding and, but you have to, uh, you have to break it down into sections. So you don't get overwhelmed. And there are days that uh, make you want to give up, but actually just don't because it's, it's part of the process. It's normal to be overwhelmed at first. And uh, uh, there will be supervisor uh, that you can tap on to their expertise uh, besides your own mentor. So, so uh, as you go on, then you will gain more confidence. There will be lots of trials and errors and, and it's part of the process. Yeah, just keep on going on. Yeah, like even until now, I'm still debugging. Before, before I open this Zoom meeting, I'm still debugging uh, quite a very hard code because uh, I don't know like where it stands and where it ends. And I'm, I'm supposed to meet my supervisor earlier, but he is so busy that we keep on rescheduling re stuff. So I would say most of the time you would have to be very independent. Like, I would say 95% of the time. Yeah, just um, if you get frustrated, then always remember that, always remember to take breaks. Maybe just have um, walk to your kitchen and go outside for a few minutes, then come back. Then you will be able to see things uh, through a fresh point of view. Yeah, uh, I think that's all for me. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kenneth. Walk to your kitchen and get your favorite food. <laughs> yeah, but I like what, what you shared. You know, I think you're not alone. Most of our learners also share that it can be really intimidating, stressful, uh, frustrating. That's why we're having this reality talk, you know, that we really share with you what you will really encounter in the bootcamp and apprenticeship, and even when you get into your, your full-time job. But what like Kenneth said, you have to stay motivated, you know, you don't um, give up as part of the process. That's that's really important, and you know the the sense of being independent 
also. So, and it's okay to be overwhelmed. And some of you may be already overwhelmed with so many information that you're receiving from this info session, but don't get overwhelmed. We still hope that you'll proceed with your application. Thank you so much, Kenneth. And okay, let me um, call on uh, Jeremy, one of our dedicated mentors who will also share about his experience. So with you, Jeremy. Hello, uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, okay, so, uh, oops. Okay, so hold on a second. Okay, yeah. So thanks, thanks, Leslie. Uh, thanks for uh, inviting me back again. Uh, so um, my name is Jeremy. I'm the uh, CTO uh, for Staffany, and basically Staffany is so a little bit about the company. We're a tech startup, or we've been around for about four years old, um, and uh, we offer a workforce management solution. So basically, uh, scheduling, attendance, and timesheets. And most of our customers are places like restaurants, uh, cafes, and things like that. We help them uh, manage their, their workers. So as the person leading uh, engineering, uh, I'm in charge of technical decisions, things like how to build uh, application infrastructure. Um, I'm also in charge of hiring and managing engineers and technical people, uh, as well as managing their growth and motivation, right? So that's just like really briefly me and my company and my work, right? Um, a little bit about the industry, right? I'm sure you guys don't need me to tell you, but tech is huge, right? Tech is exploding. Um, the biggest companies in the world are tech companies and tech companies, uh, more than uh, more traditional companies tend to grow uh, much faster uh, than, than, than other traditional companies. Um, but even if you don't look at uh, specifically tech companies, if you look at more the, the, the more regular companies, um, they're, they're starting to move to tech as well. Everything needs to digitalize or move towards uh, technology uh, so that they can uh, compete and not fall behind, right? You see this with banks, right? Like Stand Chart or whatever. Um, and I'm sure you'll start to see this across other things like schools, uh, lawyers and, and hospitals and things like that. Um, in our case, uh, it's restaurants, right? Um, and in, in a situation like this, the, the demand uh, for uh, skilled, uh, experienced labor uh, far outpaces supply, right? Um, there was an anecdote a friend shared with me a few years ago that um, he runs this job marketplace and the uh, ratio of job postings to applicants is something like 36 to one. So um, it, it, there's, there's way more, uh, uh, openings in, in this space than there are uh, people, right? So that's sort of snapshot of the industry uh, as I see it. A uh, little bit about my experience as a mentor. So um, I'm technically not currently a mentor because I switched over as, and became a employer partner instead. So uh, the first batch, I mentored two guys, uh, this uh, uh, Chong Kai and Dallin, uh, and then, um, basically worked with them uh, throughout their journey. Um, they were obviously very raw, very uncertain. Uh, and I tried to uh, help them uh, where, where I could with, with their questions, right? So help them find their feet in the industry. Uh, certain uh, cases, I made connection for them to my network. Uh, I would allay their concerns if oh, like, oh, uh, supervisor said this, 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 do I need to be worried, right? Or I would shed some light on the business side because um, like uh, one of them, uh, Chong Kai was in, in a very new startup and they were having some issues. Uh, so I was saying like, okay, maybe they're having issue with this, right? Uh, this particular issue. And of course I would help them with uh, technical questions um, and with their technical interviewing process uh, once they started looking for uh, full-time jobs. And yeah, they're, they're both successfully made the transition to, to a technical career, right? Uh, after that, um, I, I brought my company in as an employee partner. So we have uh, one person, uh, a lady called Terry, uh, who's still on her apprenticeship with us. And she's great, right? I'm, in this case, I have a little more direct control over her experience. And I'm working with her to make sure um, that she's always challenged, like basically to give her uh, tasks and uh, um, projects that are just slightly beyond her comfort zone so that she's always being stretched and uh, to get as much experience as possible within the very limited amount of time that I have with her. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's kind of, I think, everything I have to share. Uh, but I'm sure there will be lots of uh, questions if you have them. Uh, please, please do shoot them. Uh, back to you, Leslie. 
Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Yeah, like everyone's saying, tech is exploding. I didn't even know that ratio of that one is to 36. That that's a learn something new tonight. Like, thank you, thank you, Jeremy. That might be out of date now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I might be even doubling now, right? <laughs> oh, great, great. Thank you, Jeremy. So we've seen your questions coming. Please keep them coming. So um, Huishan is answering those questions. Some are uh, answered in the um, in the chat, so just click on the answered tab there. So this has, Jasper has a question. So for the front end website, I assume JavaScript will be thought. So how about the back end, or is it thought using Python or Java? Uh, so I think I can answer this. Hello. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Okay. Can okay. So um, for. Uh, for Stan chart at least, uh, we are using uh, JavaScript uh, React and also that's for the front end. And since it's uh, dealing with data, a lot of data in the back end, so we are using Python and Java as well. But then you have to be mindful that even though the bootcamp will try to prepare you for as much as uh, for as much knowledge they can squeeze inside, which is usually JavaScript, React, uh, uh, Java, that's all. And it, it actually takes longer than those few months to mas master those languages. So uh, in the bank as well, they, they also have uh, legacy codes that it depends on which team you are in. So you actually have to learn extra languages actually to be able to fulfill their demands. But uh don't worry your supervisor will be kind enough to uh help you out with uh, your journey great thank you thank you so much kenneth for answering that question all right so uh derek is asking yeah. I'm, I'm currently taking the python course do we really need to be very confident in order to take the quiz or we only need to know the two modules on the surface Anyone wants to take that answer and that question? From Derek. Derek, maybe just to clarify, is that your question is that the quiz on the application process, you mean? Derek, are you there? Oh yes, the quiz on the application, right? Okay, so maybe Hadija, do you wanna take on this question in terms of the application? Do they, do they have to be very confident in order to take the quiz? Or they just, do they just have to know the modules on the surface? I would say that you would have to uh, understand the content that was presented in those lessons um, to a point where you feel that you would be able to apply the knowledge that you have gained. Um, so you wouldn't be able to do well in the quiz if let's say you were listening to it in the background while doing something else. Like you would actually have to sit and pay attention to it as if you were in a lesson um, and I would say most people just do it once and they're able to do well enough um, to get on to, to the next stage of the application. Great. Thank you, Adija and Derek. I hope that answered your question. I think we can also address, I see common questions about your current employment status. Like, do I have to resign? Do you, can, I, can I apply? I'm employed. Like, why is, is asking, like, if I'm able to attend all the lessons without fail, can I still serve my notice in a current employer? Do I have to be unemployed before the course commences? So maybe I'll pass the time to Wishan to address these um, common questions that we see about um, employment. Sure, thanks, Leslie. So I think I've tucked in um, a template answer to most people who have asked that question. I think we need to first of all understand the spirit of this particular program. So this um, the, the SGAP program was started because of COVID 
and people lost their jobs because of COVID. Uh, or, you know, so they were either retrenched or that particular industry was just going through a very tough time, like we all know because of COVID, hospitality, tourism, F&B, those industries have been affected. And because of that, the government decided to start this program and you'll realize that's why it's heavily funded. You only pay $750 for the entire course, but you get $1,500 or up to $1,500 per month, right, for the entire nine months. So we want to help the people who need the help so that they can actually make, uh, do this program, get an apprenticeship so that it gives them a soft landing to land a full-time job in tech. And this is for people who, like I said, were previously in industries or in roles that were affected by COVID and it gives them a new lease of life, right? Like you hear from Kenneth and Timothy's stories. So then they can now pivot to tech and launch new sustainable careers. So we hope that you understand the, like I said, the premise of this program and why we want to encourage people who, if you have full-time jobs, uh, perhaps as I mentioned, if you understand the spirit of the program, it should be able to answer uh, the question of, you know, whether or not you should be quitting your jobs to join this program. I hope this helps. Okay, thank you, Vishen. Another question from Gideon. If I were to be accepted, how best can I prepare myself for the coursework before starting the full stack developer, developer program? So maybe either Timothy, I'm oh, sorry, um, Jeremy or Kenneth can take on this question. Uh, okay, Jeremy, are you, are you answering this? Uh, no, no, it's okay. I, <laughs> you can go okay, ahead. Uh, okay, so if I can like do the bootcamp again, I would have taken all the crash course. So on YouTube, like if you if you don't want to pay for like Udemy or CodeCamp, yeah, something like that, you can um, YouTube gives a lot of good resources. So you just uh, study their uh, uh, crash course on JavaScript or Python or Java. Yeah, I think that, that's a very good start to it. And then for any concepts that you don't understand, you can actually search on YouTube as well or Stack Overflow for each of the sections that you have fun, you find ha you're having difficulty of grasping the concepts. And then uh, actually try out the coding in in uh, IDE like Visual Studio Code, like to see if your code actually works. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, uh, I, Jeremy. Anything to add? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Just just really quick. So I don't really remember what it was like to learn coding because that was very long ago for me. So I, I'm not going to tell you about the learning coding perspective. What I will tell you is the three months that they give you in the bootcamp is not enough. <laughs> it is not enough. They, you know, the bootcamp will do its best to squeeze all the knowledge into you, but you will need to um, learn a lot more on the job or uh, in your own time. Um, so as much of, as much as, as much learning as you can do before that or during it or afterwards is better. Um, uh yeah in order to like really like uh be be prepared for for the tech industry great thank you so much jeremy we have a question from fadi very interesting question for timothy and kenneth so after your boot camp like did you have any difficulty finding job anyone wants to start tim or kenneth yeah i'll i'll, I'll start first um for me I wouldn't say that it's, it's, it's difficulty, having difficulties, um, it will be not, it's, it's not easy. I mean, first, um, um, uh, for me, I will find that, oh, am I, am I able to do that? Do I have the, the when, when you look at the, res, uh, the, the, the job application, the, the job application um, uh, advertisement, you'll be thinking like um, minimum three years of experience. So I start counting, um, I only have three months bootcamp. So um, am I eligible for that and things like that? So these are all the very negative feelings that you have inside you. But always remember, you are, you are, you are like what Jeremy said, all the knowledge are squeezed into you and uh, generation is, um, is 
has this all planned out and everything in, in control. So they'll, 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 they'll squeeze all the knowledge into you and get you prepared and um, let go of um, one year experience, two years experience and go try for it. And um, um, the, 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 the the, the more interview that you go, you, you have more, more experience and you, you, you feel more uh, fluent and you feel more confident. And then when you speak more confidently and that is where you will, you, you will shine. So for, for me, I have um, gone through at least a dozen of um, interview. I've sent out, um, um, to be honest, a few hundred application, job application. But um, I, 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 I was lucky that um, I, I met my current employer and he is into old people. He prefer my age than the, the youngest, younger, I'm sorry, but um, they, they prefer older folks like me. Um, they, they feel that I'm more, you know, probably the, the, the image looks more um, convincing to the client. So um, um, I, I, I skip the, the technical uh, interview, which is the dreading and um, I got myself employed, so well, it's not too bad. So go for it. So I, I would like to add on that. Uh like what uh Jeremy said, uh now there there are actually a lot more jobs uh in the tech industry. So they're actually looking looking for people to fill in this job. And uh if you are uh, like for stand chart, they actually they actually have uh the apprenticeship program, and then uh there would be chances of you getting hired directly into uh upon completion of the apprenticeship. Just that, uh, try to do your best, and then like three months before the end of the, uh, I would say two months before the end of the program do approach your uh, supervisor and then uh, talk with them like uh, where this is going. Uh, is there any chances of you to actually become uh, per permanent with them? Yeah, that's what I, I would suggest. Yep. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you, Tim and Kenneth. And, and one, another question here, um, it's 8.30. So we apologize, we kind of exceeded see a bit of a time. So Ray is just asking how many candidates will be selected for the program? And again, as we mentioned, this is the last cohort that passed the time to Hadija. And if some of you um, need to go off, um, Hadija will send a feedback link. So we appreciate if you can um, share your feedback first about the info session before you go off. And then we um, let Hadija answer this question. Yeah, Hadija. Uh, sure. So usually we get, uh, we look for about 25 to 30 people for each class. Uh, so that would be about 30 plus people for full stack development and 30 plus people for cloud. Uh, but since this is our final cohort, we're still, uh, you know, looking for more people to fill uh, the classes right now. Although we do have to say, um, like I mentioned earlier, because we evaluate on a rolling basis, um, it is possible that we fill these slots before we actually reach our 23rd February deadline. Great, great, thanks. Any more um, final questions before Hadisha can, um, can close the session? Will it involve lots of maths or algorithms? <laughs> Yongjin is asking. Anyone wants to answer that from a cloud perspective or from full stack? Lots of maths and algorithms. Um, I, I will add if you like cloud, uh, if you hate math, then probably you will want to take out cloud. Um, um, cloud, and you go to Azure or, or AWS or GCP, it's all about pushing off buttons and that's all. <laughs> and, and logical thinking. So forget about one plus one equals to two. Um, for um, programming, I, I would say it's more a little bit like math, but not really math. It's more like uh, functions and formula, which you have to think about yourself. So that's the creative part about it. 
Great, thanks. Thanks, Damon. Kenneth, uh, Lena is asking, unfortunately, you cannot commit, but unfortunately, this is the last cohort for SGUP, but keep um, on the lookout on our website and our social support um, to wait for a few more announcements if there'll be new tech programs that will be launching or new company-led training programs. So hopefully you will be able to join for your next program. Any other burning questions? So yeah, if you, any more questions, drop us an email at getreadysg at generation.org. What's the level, difficulty level for cloud support from Suhata? Tim, you um, want Yeah, okay. Um, I'm not sure about what about difficult level for cloud support, but um, um, uh, definitely generation is going to bring you to the cloud. So don't worry about that. And then from there, um, um, a lot of um, continuous self-learning and will bring you from AZ900 to AZ104. So it's not that difficult. Um, it's just um, um, a lot of, um, um, how do I put it? Uh, a lot of um, motivation you, that needs to be to added to your, to your journey so that you can run the marathon. You can, you can run the marathon. Hey, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Timmy. Uh, um, over to you, Khadija, just on the last slide that we want to share. Oh, just last question for Timothy. I think Jasper, okay, I think there's a burning question for Timothy. The cloud is using Azure or GVP? Um, yeah, the, 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 the cloud is for everyone, but um, 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 Generation is focused on Azure. Um, I mean, um, AWS is the most popular. But um, I wouldn't say that AWS is, is not good. It has to be good. That's why it's popular, right? But um, Azure is is chasing up. So you, you um, for my team, there are more than 20 cloud engineers and 19 is um, working on AWS and I'm the only one in Azure. So you, you, you count your odds when the company don't want you because you're the only one with Azure. <laughs> Oh, an Azure enthusiast. Anna, you want to share something before we close from Microsoft? <laughs> no, it's all right, Timothy. If I didn't already love you, I would tell you that I love you more. So thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. Okay. All right, over to you, Anisha. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. A special thanks to our panelists as well for making time tonight. Um, so yeah, we really appreciate your feedback on today's session. Um, if you enjoyed listening to um, Kenneth, Jeremy, and Timothy, as well as from Anna as well, please do leave that um, in the feedback form. Um, let us know what helped you. Um, and if you have any questions, whether about your eligibility or anything at all, you can feel free to send us an email at this email address. Um, you can also find us on social media um, at usually where you can find us at Generation Singapore. So I'll just leave this up um, for you to uh, take the link, complete the feedback form, and once you're done, feel free to log off the call. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Tim, Jeremy, and Kenneth. Really appreciate your time. Thanks, everyone. Ariana, thank you so much. And yeah, we hope to see your applications. Two weeks to go. We're excited and yeah, just email us if you have more questions and feel free to drop off the call. Thanks for your time and enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye everyone.